welcome ladies and gentlemen to Bootch right now live from freediving or during freediving and my wristwatch check today is the legendary Vostok Amphibia the AK-47 of watches so what's today's plan so we're going to take a look at specs first and after that I'll talk about my four year experience with the watch I've had it for four years now bunch of random talking I don't know what I'm saying here but yeah just enjoy the video <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the close-up specs of the Vostok Amphibia. This watch is already four and a half years old and I can tell you a little bit about this watch now. The watch is 39.5 millimeters wide, so it's in between like 39 and 40 millimeters. The lock width is 18 millimeters, so the straps are kind of thin on this watch. The height is interesting, the height is 11 millimeters plus an additional 3 millimeters from the acrylic crystal. The watch resistance on this watch is 200 meters. It has a screw down crown. I will show you how it... This is what it sounds like. Yeah, it has a screw down crown. As I said, it's, yeah, it's 200 meters water resistant, but it can go deeper than that. I'll explain why later, but just so you know for now. I replaced the bracelet because uh, the Vostok bracelet is famously known as the, as the most uncomfortable bracelet there is. Um, I'm not sure if I still have it, but I bought this mesh bracelet um, on AliExpress and I think it looks pretty good with it. The bezel is bi-directional meaning it's not really a dive bezel I've used the bezel like for diving too more free diving not diving but in free diving the time is not as important as in diving so that's why it's like I can, I can time the time with it it's fine but it's not really a functional bezel and plus mine mine can for some reason mine actually I can take mine off like this Maybe I should mod the Vostok someday. <laughs> and it has no clicks too. So the, the, the um, bezel is, is just, it rotates fluently, it doesn't click. The crystal is, as I said, acrylic, means it accumulates more scratches, but it is shatterproof. It will never shatter on you. But it, it yeah, I've noticed when I do my stuff, when I, when I do my action really, collect some scratch some scratches but there is this little product called um, polywatch polywatch is like a cream you put it on you just rub it around with a cloth and then most of the scratches are gone now to the in to the movement of this watch the movement it has an in-house movement all made in Russia in Chistopol it's a factory in Russia as you can see it says here after Podzavod this means it's um, automatic basically, it has a winding rotor. This is Amphibia, this one says um, Protivadarnia, means, um, Protivadarnia means it's basically shock resistant. And the last thing is here, Vadanya uh, Pranitsaima 200 meters. This means water resistance 200 meters. Now this shock resistance is very interesting. I've noticed when I did I did parkour a few times with the watch and during the holidays, I've noticed that when the watch takes like a major hit or like a, gets a major shock, it stops working just for a, for like a second, and then it keeps going maybe to preserve um, the movement from further damage. It's very interesting. Maybe I can maybe I can show it to you. Okay, let's check it out. Let's see if we can do it. See, it worked. That's very interesting. I've never, I don't know if any other watch has that, but I've noticed it on this watch that it has like a preservation for shock resistance, basically. Very interesting. So it, it has an in house movement, all made in Russia. Uh, the power reserve is normally like 30 hours. 
on this watch it's a little broken i'll talk about it later but it's yeah it's not 30 hours <laughs> um and it it um the second hand ticks at uh, 19800 beats per hour so it's not not as of an, as smooth of a sweep as for my as with my Tudor or Steinhardt for example so I'll, I can show you how to set the time. You unscrew the crown, you pull it out once, and then you can basically adjust the time like this. You see the second hand stops if you put a little bit of pressure in the in, in this direction. I see up if you if you if you wind the watch back and you um, apply a bit of pressure, the watch the second hand stops basically. So you can um, set the time on atomic. The date is broken uh, at my watch, but if you want to set the date, you have to go basically to the 12 hour mark and then go back to the eight hour mark again. Yeah, and quick edit the rotor of this watch. Now the rotor which uh, winds the watch basically. I had it once, like after two years of owning it, just for some reason, it uh, unscrewed itself and I had to go to a watch shop and I got it repaired did it for free it took only like five minutes but for some reason this rotor was unscrewed yeah in general it's a very beautiful watch as you can see it's a very vintage looking watch let me just try this on uh, to show your close-up wrist shot this is the Seiko my Seiko by the way we can compare it. The Seiko is actually 43 millimeters. It's like the largest watch I have. This is what it looks like next to the Seiko. So, you know, 40 millimeters is pretty much, or 39, 40 millimeters is pretty much a sweet spot for me. So, this watch looks perfect on me. It uh, doesn't look too big, doesn't look too small. It looks very vintage. This is what I like uh, about the watch the most that it's uh, very vintage looking because they didn't change the design since the, the the company was founded so it's basically the same the watch looks the same as it looked in the very beginning okay enough of the close-up now i'll talk a bit about my experience with this watch because i've had it for uh, now f around four and a half years four years so ladies and gentlemen welcome back this is the experience part, review part. I'm here in a little cove this time. Outside it's quite windy. Um, I'll probably be diving here later, but for now I'll just do the video before I do that. Because here, I hope the audio is better here because it's quite windy out there. Here it's a little better. So, Buffett Amphibia, AK-47 of watches. By the name, the AK-47, tough gun, you know, the machine gun. Uh, it's known that it's AK 47s that last for ages. They, they are indestructible. You can throw them in dirt, you can throw them in mud, you can throw them in the water. It's, the gun's still gonna find it. Same with this Vostok. You can basically neglect it totally, you can totally beat it, bang it against everything, throw it in the water, throw it in dirt. It's gonna survive. It's gonna survive more than you. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Just worry about yourself, don't worry about the watch. <laughs> uh, Vostok, the, the real name is Vostok Amphibia, Paruski. It's a Russian watch, of course. Um, and they're built in Chistopol. Chistopol, made in Chistopol. I bought mine in Russia, uh, in the middle of Russia, where my granddad used to live. It's a little town, really in the middle of Russia. But in Russia, they sell those Vostok watches pretty much in any, any town which has like major stores. So they're pretty common in Russia. I bought it for 60 euros, something like that. I think you can buy them online for like 90 to 120 euros, something like that. I bought mine for 60. Four and a half years ago, this was my very first prop automatic watch. So I have a special connection with this one, basically. And it being my very first automatic watch, I, of course, yeah, I did some mistakes, which sometimes watch beginners do. For example, my date doesn't work anymore because like in the very first year of owning the watch i didn't set the date properly I, I you know i i somehow broke the date mechanism and now the date is is um 
stuck between uh, two and three. My power reserve don't work anymore that good. It's my power reserve in this watch is around six hours. So if I go to bed, I lay the watch aside, I wake up in the morning, watch stopped running an hour ago. So I have to rewind it. But for me, that's not a problem because you have to see Vostok not as a precision watch, not as a luxury watch, it's a tool watch. They don't have to set the time like on normally on my like on my other watches I set the time on atomic basically. I, I, I set it at I set it at atomic time. This one I don't worry, I just wind up, it's so the time about right and that's that. You don't don't expect precision of this watch, don't expect like luxury of, of this watch. You can expect a reliable little wristwatch which is going hold up through your adventures. What did I do with the watch? I went diving with the watch, free diving, I did parkour. Uh, what did I do? What did I do as well? I, 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 I've, I've traveled the world with this one too. I was in the Caribbean, I was in the Canary Islands, now in Sardinia. I was many times in the with this watch. As you saw in the very, very beginning, I do free dive with this watch because it's a functional dive watch. It holds up. A, up until 200 meters. Now it has a water resistance of stated 200 meters, but actually it's more than that because that's a different mechanism. The deeper the watch goes, the more pressure resistant it gets, basically. The seals get tighter and tighter. So it's actually, I think somebody tested it at around 700 meters of depth. So the actual water resistance of this is around 600 to 700 meters. So this is very impressive for six euros watch or six year watch. This is this, that's magnificent. Bezel works in both directions, as you can see. I can take my bezel off too. I don't know why. It just it just goes off, but I can just plug it on again. Here we go. I don't know why, but I don't I don't bother. <laughs> Here. I exchanged the strap, the strap, you know, it's, it's not the, the watch strap, the original Vostok strap is called the most uncomfortable strap there is, kind of true. I would exchange the strap, if you buy the watch new on the metal bracelet, exchange the bracelet, I was, sorry, I was talking about the bracelet, exchange the bracelet, stuck it. Or put it on NATO strap, NATO straps are good too. I, I've had mine on NATO strap for some time, now I've just exchanged this mesh it's like a mesh brace let's see yeah. my Vostok has the anchor and the like the steering wheel of the ship on it that's like the cool thing about Vostok watches that most of them like they did have the evolved the design they were designed in the 1970s somewhere something like that and the design is still the same so basically you're getting a vintage watch like some people of you, I know, you buy vintage watches for the aesthetic, for the look, but in this case, you're kind of getting a vintage watch, but just a new, you know, it's just never worn, but it's still a vintage watch, basically. And this is very cool, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of vintage watches too, I don't own any, but I'm a fan of it, for sure, and that's why I kind of like this watch as well. I kind of, it feels like a vintage watch on the wrist, it's 40 millimeter case size, which is okay, but it's a diver, so it's, for me, it fits just perfect. Visibility is pretty good. On the water, you can say, oh, of course, my loom is very bad. Like, legit, I don't know what happened to my loom, but my loom is, is horrible. And at night, you can you really have to hold the watch like this in front of your face, so you can see anything. But I don't use it at night. I don't need to know my time at night. I don't go. I don't go diving at night. I'm, I'm a hobby free diver. I don't, I don't do that. So basically, always in the dark, I can check it. I check the time. This watch is pretty good. One good thing too is that the hands and the indices they reflect the sun pretty good but they catch the sunlight before the rest of the dial does but that means i can sometimes when it's gloomy i can still see the hands very good so this is this is a cool so i'm going to make this last point then i'll be gone um, i think most of watches are something for like, real watch aficionados i'd say like spanish but like you, you know your crazy watch not when you know what a Vostok watch is and when you own one. Like especially like Western people, they don't know that watch at all. But if you're kind of familiar with watch, you just know the watch. And if you have one, like 
if I see somebody wearing a Vostok outside of Russia, I think, damn, he knows something about watches. Even in Russia, they're kind of rare because like 60 euros for Russian people on the countryside, that's quite a, quite a lot. And I've seen, when I was in Russia, I've seen many people wearing like fake Vostok Komandirskis, Vostok Amphibias, like you just see they're fake, they're badly made in their parts because they can't afford it there. But even in Russia, if, some, if I see somebody with a real Komandirsky or Vostok, I just think, no, damn, like they have, they have some class. Basically, they maybe they got it from the military, maybe they have bought it, but I know they have class at least. And it's kind of the same in real life. If I see somebody with Vostok, I'm just thinking, well, he knows something about watches. Because those are tough, robust little timepieces, and they're serious timepieces. They're not just, some people just say they're fun watches, but in my opinion, those are serious watches. They hold up quite more than some other Swiss made watches. And they're all in house. All in house, all in, made in Russia. Every part is made in Russia, nothing exported, nothing. So in my opinion, Vostok doesn't get the love it's, it deserves. For me it does. I'm sure for you it does as well, but like it's not a very common watch in the watch world. Or not a very known watch in the watch world. So with nothing further to say, I, uh, it's just as I said, it's an improvised video. I hope you enjoyed it. You have a, have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, have strong wrist game, peace out.